Hello, this is Compound Interest Stock Guy, and today we're going to be talking about the Green Organic Dutchman and their financial for this quarter. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. It helps my channel grow. I appreciate it. And give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Give me a thumbs down if you dislike the video. Before we get into this, I want to disclose I'm not a financial advisor. This is just for entertainment information purposes. Do not buy or sell stock based on anything I talk about in this video. Buy after you did your research, you did due diligence, and you like the company. Okay, so the Green Organic Dutchman has never reported any revenue before, but today they did a first thing for them, which is impressive. So I got this information from PR Newswire and they have 263.5 million of cash. So they're burning through cash at a relatively pace. Let's just say if they're not able to accelerate their warrants, I don't know if there's an acceleration on their warrants, but if people don't exercise their warrants in the next year, uh, they're going to have to dilute more pretty soon. I mean, not soon, but within time. Because I think this company always wants to have a moat of $100 million of cash plus. And if they keep burning, say, $18, 20000000 million every quarter, that's going to add up to $80 million in a year. So... That's going to deplete their money. So, so yeah. Uh, so, they did the hemp pull-in. They acquired it for cash and deferred consideration for $18.6 million. And their first quarter revenues were from hemp pull-in. So, it's not from their own growth. It's from acquisitions. So, that's fine. I mean... It's just part of the growth cycle. They have to acquire certain companies to get their sales. But it's better if a company can grow organically and, you know, start from scratch and not really buy any other companies, do it all themselves. But it's not really possible to do it all themselves. So it is what it is. So they bought it for... Uh, I mean, the company did 1.9 million for the fourth quarter, and they accelerated construction spending at Hamilton and Valley Field sites to 39.5 million in the fourth quarter, increase of 19% or 6.4 million compared to 33 million in the third quarter. So they're spending more money at these sites. And they completed a bought deal for $76.2 million. So that's what I was talking about. They're going to always want to have a moat around them. So that's, I mean, that's part of it. You know, they're not going to have the amount of shares that Aurora is probably going to ever, ever have. We're not for a long, long time. But I think they're definitely going to grow in their shares with the warrants going to be exercised. So I'll get to the exact number of shares out after we go through this. But yeah, experience the loss of operations, 18.1 million, 44.5 for all of 2018. Uh, ramping up operations, they're talking about research, administration, Completed the largest Canadian cannabis IPO and they raised 132 million. Completed two bot deals worth 101 million and private placements worth 77.6 million. And received reiterated support from the investor community with 63.4 million warrants exercise. Yeah, warrants exercise, exactly. 
Salary construction spending at Hamilton and Valley Field sites to 96.8 million throughout the year. Increase total planned global production capacity to 219,000 with improved total plans. Okay, so that's their plan. Plans. Will plans be executed? That's a good question. That's what you got to look at. You can't look at it from all positive side that oh it's just automatically all gonna happen and it's just gonna work flawlessly you know there can be problems uh i've seen it with companies so i mean we'll see if they get to 219,000 kgs with like say 2022 or 2023 that'll be a a nice thing they'll be able to make over a billion dollars per year so but I wouldn't really count on them getting to that uh, I don't know I, I just gotta put my pessimistic hat on because I've seen it with all these different companies uh, you know even uh, consolation brands for 2020 they think 1 billion I don't know. I'm not really thinking they'll do 1 billion in 2020 unless they acquire, I don't know, a can trust and organigram or some, some other companies to, to get them to that level. Excuse me. Created joint venture with LL Leca Grupo and Prezeril for distribution of medicinal cannabis into 7,600 pharmacies store and stores in Mexico. Okay. Form joint venture with Med Jepson in Denmark and dispensary in Jamaica. Concluded a collaboration agreement with Velvet Management, a new company created by the largest wine distributor in Canada, Philip Dan Duran Wines, focused on cannabis sales and distribution. See, what I like about this company is that Tim Seymour is on the board. Uh, I'm not saying he's necessarily going to add anything, but it gives them credibility so if their investment community is is on the sidelines thinking i don't know about t god that gives them reinsurance that tim seymour is on them so that's how these big companies operate just look at the endorsement from uh nelson pelts i, th I think that's his first name but his last name's pelts uh, look at what that's doing to Aurora. So is that guy, has that guy added $2 billion worth of value to Aurora since he moved? I don't think so. I mean, I mean, unless he's just secretly made the company $500 million, like on a price of sales for, that's $2 billion. But no, I mean, it's all hype. You look at the fact that Aurora was maybe around 1175 or something like that. And now they're close to 14. So it's added about 1.5 billion to the market cap since that announcement. So yeah, it's just basically an endorsement and it gives credibility. I don't want to ramble too much about Aurora, but that's the same thing with Tim Seymour being on T God. So, so yeah, I personally own zero shares in this company. I've always thought they're really overvalued. So, I don't know. I I look at it differently now. They're starting to generate revenues. Then it's the show me period. If if I can see that. These revenues are going to go up a lot and I could buy it at a good price. I might do a swing trade to try to get 15 to 30 to 40 percent. Uh, again, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that, but 
after seeing that they're making revenues now, I am more enticed to invest in the company. So we'll see. Incorporated multiple subsidiaries around the world include Netherlands, Greece, Colombia, and Germany. And secured exclusive licensing rights to Stillwater Foods Ripple SC patent pen soluble cannabinoid ingredient technology and in Evil Labs and CBX Sciences brand and proprietary cannabinoid vaporization technologies. Hmm. I'm not really sure what that is, but interesting. So they hired Mr. Prem Bermani as company's beverage science and research division chairman. Appointed Brian Afed as the company's CEO and expand executive team, bringing over 200 years of combined experience and leadership from the consumer product goods and pharmaceutical industries in the, into the company. 200 years of combined experience and leadership from CPG and pharmaceutical industries. Interesting. Now it's a spin-off transaction to provide TGOD shareholders seed round. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So, yeah, that's the that's T God. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I just felt like clapping. Ah, uh, price to book ratio is three point eight eight seven. See, I am doing this because nobody's doing this stuff, and there's way too many people out there that don't have a effing clue what a price to book is i'm here to teach investors and traders what the f a price to book is all right so price to book is all your assets and your cash what the enterprise values worth okay if you're Warren Buffett, are you going to want to pay 4 or 10 of a price to book if you want to get a good value for the company? No, you don't want to pay. You want to pay under one price to book. That's why I'm doing really good on Harvest One because I saw Harvest One when it's price to book was around 0 0.5 or 5.5 and now it's about price book of one and that's fine uh these companies are gonna get above price book of one that's the fact they have uh future revenues and profits baked into the cake so you know you just gotta look at it from a subjective eye that T God has uh, 262 million and they're making 1.9 million in Poland. So based on what they're doing, are they worth $1.5 billion? No. They're worth what this says they're worth around 375 million. So it's giving them uh, their assets worth about 100 million. So you got to look at that. Uh, again, if they execute and they're doing a billion dollars by 2022, then absolutely, this company will be worth more than 1.5 billion. In my opinion, they should be worth at least probably like three and a half to five billion by that time. But the market will probably give them a valuation of somewhere around like six to eight billion by that time. And there's a possibility this company could get a big cash injection similar to how Kronos or uh, Canopy got. So that is kind of the risk you take. I mean, if they get that, it's blue skies, right? So I don't know.
I personally don't want to buy this stock right now just because it's been running. Will it go higher? Probably. But I don't know. If it goes higher, goes to eight. I don't know. I'd preferably rather buy MedMen at four dollars and get it to eight dollars than buy this at close to six. What is that? Five forty eight. I hit five eighty one today. It's almost at six. For it to go to eight bucks, probably. I think that's the highest it's gonna go. So I mean, maybe it goes to 10, but I don't know. If I would have got in on all the seeds, like the IPO, when it was like a buck 50 or 75 cents, hell, I'd be keeping some of my shares still for long term, I guess. I guess this company could go to 10 or 15 or 20 bucks. But personally, for me, uh, I see better value in other companies, but I think the market really likes TGOD, so it is what it is. They're gonna hype the shit out of it, you know? It is what it is, so I can't tell you anything differently. Uh, me personally, I think that TGOD on the subjective level is only worth about a buck fifty or a dollar. Uh, so that's what the price of the book would be. If it's like one, it's worth like a buck 30, buck 50. So I don't really want to pay $5 or $6 for the stock, even though it can go to 10, 15, $20 and they got tons of cash. Uh, I mean, if it pulls back and it goes to $4, I might pick up 100 shares. But as far as buying that $6, nah, I'll let, I'll let other people who are chasing companies buy it. And I hope they do well. Again, this market's filled with all types of investors. So if you just look at Bilge Farms, all right? Bilge Farms, 21.42, and it hit 23.47 today, okay. So, their price to book is 7.596, okay. So, where's my calculator? I'll find one here. Do, 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 seven, okay. So, 21.50. I bought this stock at buck 92. So, divided by 7.6. Yeah, so I bought this company when the price to book was probably somewhere around 0 0.7. And hell, I had no idea that this company was going to go to a price to book of 7.5. That's, uh, that's incredible. I find it very interesting. But, you know, the market does incredible things. I bought 800 shares at 192 and I sold that 191 so ah that's but if I was a smarter investor at the time and I bought it when the price book was super low and it just kept riding it riding it I would have made a ton of money so that's why I would prefer buying good quality uh, licensed producers when their price to book is close to one or under one and if they start executing then their price to book can go a lot higher and their shares can go up a lot and you can double triple quadruple 5x 6x all that good stuff 
before the market sets in and it goes back. See, unless Bilge Farms does something amazing in the future quarters, eventually this stock's got to go back down to reality. So whether they go down back to 10 or 15, I don't know. There's there's no saying. There, I mean, this company could go to a hundred bucks. Who knows? I, I, I don't know. I can't see the future and I don't have enough money to pump up the stock and make it go to $5 billion or anything like that. So, you know, it's just out of my wheelhouse. So it is what it is, but it puts things into perspective and yeah, I hope you learned a lot from this uh, video and uh, subscribe, hit the bell notification to be notified when I do a video and give me a thumbs up and until next time, peace.